this presentation, we're going to talk about RFA simulations and basically how to do it. Push simulate. All right, lectures are good. Is that too short? We need to make a, okay. All right. So what we want to do is just cover a little bit about what goes into the simulations, the uh, discuss the, the parameters that we put in there, the input parameters, the simulation options and settings, the output options. And then we'll go through and demonstrate how to, how to actually complete one of the simulations and then show some of the tabular results and plots to go with it. All right, so <clears throat> RFA, of course, is gonna incorporate um, all three of the preceding types of information that we've looked at uh, that in, the, in the previous lectures. And that, of course, includes the, the input data, the analyses, and the reservoir models that we just talked about. Um, so again, you can recall that input data is our discharge gauges, our inflow hydrographs, our stage gauges, and of course, the volume frequency curves. And the analysis that we talked about is going to include the flood seasonality, the reservoir starting stage duration, and the empirical frequency curves. And then, of course, we're going to include that reservoir model. Um, so the stochastic simulation uh, results in our stage frequency curve, which is what we're really looking for, our flood hazard, um, also known you know, as our loading curve, flood hazard, several different things that we call it. But that is what our goal is for this, for this process. So... Once a new simulation is created, this simulation window um, shows up in your desktop area. So <clears throat> as per anything in RFA, area one here is where you enter in your name and your description. So you got the second area here, which is all the required simulation parameters. That includes our input parameters, our simulation parameters, and what output options you want. So you can click on this tabular results tab here um, it's where the three is labeled it, it'll if you click that it'll generate the tabular results um, after each after a simulation and then of course we have area four here which is where the generated plot um, will show up for your simulated results all right now let's look at a little bit more detail on each of these so first we have of course the input parameters so First, we want to select the uh, statistical parameters from each of the drop-down menus from the previous completed analysis. So that's, of course, your, your volume frequency, your flood seasonality, and your starting stage analysis. And, of course, you want to make, especially if you're doing sensitivities, you want to make sure each of these are with the same critical duration that you're looking at. So if you've got a couple critical durations in there, make sure you don't mix those up and make sure you have the same ones. Uh, next is select your reservoir model. Again, you might have uh, several of them that you want to be testing. Um, so you just keep up the name of the overall simulation to make sure it's, you know what's being selected in each one. And then finally, you've got your um, inflow hydrographs down here. Um, so these are, they have a weighting to them. So the way RFA works is you have to have at least one selected. Um, if a chat box is checked, you have to have a number there for the weights. Um, if you don't have a number there, make sure it's unchecked. The weights do not have to add up to one. They can be some something less from one, between zero and one. Um, but they can also all be one. It's going to use those numbers as the, the relative weight that it's going to select in its, in its um, simulation. So if they're all one, then you're giving them all equal weight. Pretty straightforward. All right, the next tab is the simulation parameters. That's our simulation settings. Um, there are three options for the simulation types. That is our full uncertainty, our expected and median frequency curves only. So if you'll hear us say this several times, if you run a sensitivities, if you're testing things, you wanna just really run the expected only. Um, once you've got everything settled, that's when you run your full uncertainty. Because again, the, you'll see this, the, if you haven't done it already, the expected runs are much faster within seconds, whereas the full uncertainty will take a little bit longer. So next is your routing options, the routing time window um, and days indicate the number of days to route each simulated um, flood event. So the routing time window, of course, should be long enough to make sure your reservoir is peaking um, on each one. And you want to, we'll see this in some of the other options later lectures, you want to be able to go through some of the output results to make sure your hydrographs are actually peaking um, from 1 to 10,000 uh, results for all of your results. <laughs> if it's not peaking, then you're going to have a lower loading curve than what is actually should be happening. So there's also options there for the routing time from 15 minutes, one hour, six hour, and one day available. 
And again, you want to select this based on your hydrograph, but also based on your routing times. Uh, a 15 minute time window is going to take four times longer than a one hour time step. So, so next is your sampling options. Um, there's a number of realizations. So the number of the realizations should be chosen again in consideration of your runtime, the accuracy and the, and the project needs. Um, often if you're going to run this full uncertainty, you might select the, uh, the, the simplest one at first, just to make sure everything kind of goes through, goes through smoothly. That, that initial one um, sometimes takes only a few minutes to run. And so you get a kind of idea of how it projects and that everything's good before you run your final full uncertainty. And it, we recommend at least a thousand realizations as a minimum, uh, if not more, for your final run. All right. Then we have the skipped skip inflow events with AEP. So this option allows you to skip inflow events um, at an annual exceed. Uh, with an annual exceeds probability greater than the value that you're selecting from the drop down menu. So the inflow options is similar to the realizations. You know, you choose it based on your what you're considering your run times and what your needs are. Um, if if you really only need the upper end of the curve and you don't really need to match the lower end, you can select like the point 10, the 10 year, it's gonna simulate everything from a 10 year to the lower frequencies. It won't run the higher frequencies. That'll shorten your run times, um, but it also won't have any curves um, shown on there. So again, you might be selecting like the 10 year just for sampling just for real quick purposes but for your final run you might run out the full um the full simulation the full um out to point 0.9 or point whatever out there so you get the full curve in there all right and last is the prng seed um so this is your pseudo pseudo random number generator your prng uh, for your stochastic simulation. So the auto setting right now by default is one, two, three, four, five, uh, pretty standard number. The user can define a new one if you want, but the seed is used to initialize the PRNG se sequence of random numbers. So as long as the same seed is used every time, you're gonna get the same sequence of random numbers. So if you go in there and change it up, you'll change the answer. As long as you don't change that, you will always re um, re you'll reproduce the exact same random sequence numbers, reproducing the exact same numbers and answers. So if you change that on you, somebody, um, it's going to <laughs> throw off the answer and you might be surprised. Okay, so now once all the input parameters um, are selected, you can run the simulation here from the, the simulate button. Again, like we talked about, the expected runs, median curve runs, those are gonna take you just seconds. The full uncertainty, if you're running the shorter, everything kind of keeping things short, so you might run it in a couple minutes and we might do that one of the exercises. If you run the full final one, um, it could go, depending on the size, if you select like the 10,000 realizations, you're looking probably at an hour or more. Um, if you do a thousand, you're looking more like 20 to 30 minutes. So just depends. Um, if you're willing to just let it sit for a little bit. Uh, but it's going to generate some pretty big data files. You'll, if you've done this, you'll see when you run the full certainty, you'll see 12, 13 gigabytes of data sitting there after you run it. Without it, when it's just expected only, you're looking at kilobytes. So it's, it generates a lot of data. So be, re <laughs> be ready for that. So if you have a bunch of full uncertainty runs, you can end up with a lot of gigs of data. So typically we usually only have one full uncertainty run in there. Um, unless you have some reasons for sensitivities. Uh, all right, the last tab of the simulation parameter includes the output options. So the first option allows the user to choose between three types of frequency curves. So those three types, of course, is the, our primary one, the stage frequency curve. Um, you know, that's, most, that's the, really what we're in here for. And so then you also can select the peak discharge frequency curve, which created it's created by processing the peak release uh, for each flood event from the stochastic simulation instead of uh, instead of the peak stage, and then of course you have the discharge duration frequency curve. So this curve is created by sampling the maximum average release over the over a duration. So this option requires the duration to be set. Um, so RFA simulation framework relies on the critical duration. So, you know, key, key theme, keep your critical duration all the way through this. As, as such, so the discharge duration frequency curve will be more accurate for the durations, at least as long as the critical inflow duration. 
All right, that final output option, of course, is our uncertainty limits. By default, it's the 90% confident bounds, but you have options for other choices if you want to run other choices for, for a particular reason. So after any, entering you know, all of our simulation parameters, now we get to finally click the simulate button. So the project will automatically save any changes and begin the simulation. So if the simulation does not begin, be sure to check your message for warnings or errors that might be occurring. Um, if the simulation is performed, the user can cancel the simulation at any time using the cancellation button, but you have to be quick if it's an expected run because it's going to go quick. So with the simulation, uh, um, when it's being performed, a progress bar will be appear uh, to the left of the simulation button showing the progress of the simulation. So when the simulation is course is complete, the, the following image will appear, which notes the run time. So you can get an idea of how long it's been. It helps you keep track of how long it's going. So, all right, once the simulation is complete, a frequency plot will display in the main window under the frequency curve plot tabs. So the, the stage frequency curve is the course that our default, um, what we're, we're, we're trying to develop here. So, so the other types that we, if you selected them in the box, the other types, of course, are the, the peak discharge um, frequency curve right here. And then you also have like the discharge um, duration frequency curve. So that's what those kind of look like. So these can be used to inform things like your spillway failure modes, um, releases for downstream control points, levy loadings, and, and other items that kind of that are involved around the releases. All right. On any of the frequency curve plots, you can select an empirical frequency curve from the drop down list that was previously calculated in that, that analysis. Um, so the observed empirical stage frequency data can be displayed um, at the, on the same plot of the frequency curve, you know, as shown here. And again, a lot of times we're doing that because we want our curve to somewhat fit the data the best it can, because that tells us that we are, if we can mimic what was observed, we have more confidence in the upper end. If you're not mimicking the observed at all, you have nothing to tell you have any confidence in the upper end. So. So now we also have tabular output uh, for each of the frequency curve plots, um, and they could be accessed in here from the tabular button. So the tabular results displayed will correspond to the plot that is displayed when the button is selected. So once the tabular window pops up, the user can right click, of course, on the window and copy all this information out and pa paste it into a spreadsheet or somewhere else that you might want to play, um, play around or plot or do th different things with it. All right, so when running RFA simulations, there are a few things, of course, to keep in mind. When performing sensitivity analysis or calibrations to the observed stage data, you'll want to select the expected only simulation type because these simulations run, again, within seconds, and that's the best way to kind of run through sensitivities. When performing your final flood frequency curve simulation, that's where we're going to use our full uncertainty. And this can take as long as... 20 to 30 minutes, and if you go ahead and do the 10,000 realizations at 0.9, you're probably looking at something like an hour to two hours. Um, the uncertainty interval will be computed, though, with those. You, you can't get the uncertainty intervals without the full uncertainty. All right, to obtain a reasonable, accurate estimate of the 90% confidence intervals, we always recommend at least 1,000 realizations. 